Natasha. It's going live. Hello and welcome to the Social Recruiting Show. Oh no, he's back, but we lost our guest. I'm Katrina Collier. I'm a social recruiting trainer and speaker, and I'm of course joined by my gorgeous co-host Audra Knight, who comes wearing purple plaster, as she do. <laughs> She's also an employer branding genius, owner of the Blab Cat. <laughs> Looking freaking awesome as always. Um, and we're going to get to the leg in a minute. Today, super exciting, we have Casey Donovan, who's going to introduce himself in a second, and Abby Cheeseman, who gets a bit, you know, confused and could be Nelson. Nelson? Nelson, whichever, Nelson. some other time. Anyway, welcome, we got you all on, yay! Hey guys, thanks so much for being here. Let's start with you, Casey, can you give us a little, you've got a wild, amazing background, if you can give us a little bit of it, and then what you're doing now with Clinch. Hmm. Where do you want me to start? I know, it's kind of tough. <laughs> Let's well, I've had a couple of marketing uh, and video stuff. I've, yeah, yeah. I've had a couple of career shifts and changes over the years. Um, probably three key ones. Um, I was uh, a filmmaker and uh, uh, film production guy for the first uh, I don't know, ten years or so, and then I got into um, hospitality and wine, and I was in the wine business for about a dozen years, and then I got into this crazy business about twenty years ago, and. Uh, uh, I guess that's probably the most important part. So, you know, I've, I uh, uh, was a, a retained executive recruiter uh, running around the planet for a very high level, retained a firm in New York uh, for about three or four years. And then that led to a VP of recruiting role for a billion dollar ISP in, in New York City, <clears throat> where I kind of built that organization from scratch um, wow. to about 40, 40 employees. And on the basis of actually creating that, um, I recognize that there were a lot of other companies that could use some of the things that we had crafted during that, that three-year period. So uh, I threw a shingle out, grabbed a couple of guys that, that helped me build that, and we went out and formed a company called Step Hired that I ran for a dozen years. And basically, our focus was, was uh, replicating that effort that we did at uh, Globex, which was the name of the ISP. Um, lots of it was employment branding, uh, pipelining, um, uh, employee referrals, <clears throat> anything we could do to help these companies. And most of the companies we worked with, in fact, all of them were at least a, the divisions we worked with were at least a billion dollars or greater in terms of revenue. Most of them were in the 20 to $40 billion range, so large enterprise companies. And uh, <clears throat> did that for, uh, and, and we also did exec recruiting and we did some some small uh, uh, mass, mass hiring initiatives as well during that period. But uh, that was five years ago. I uh, The downturn kind of kicked us in the ass and uh, uh. I got tired of laying off people and trying to chase after business. And so um, I uh, started a company called Upwardly Me, which is a, a pure uh, employment branding play. Um, mostly we would we were dealing with pipelining and, and um, uh, engagement. Uh, we did a lot of video in those days. We, not unlike what Abby will tell you, uh, we were sending actually the, the cameras in those days out because people were skeptical about using their, their phones the at that point. And quite frankly, the phone sucked <laughs> it, 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 yeah, five, six right? years ago. Hang on, hang on. So, for, uh, the, for any millennials there, on the but, call. Um, and I guess the last uh, handful of years I've Casey. been uh, uh, working on strategy. Casey, for the millennials, what's a camera? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's amazing, right? It's changed so much. Why the name Upwardly Me? I've been trying to work that out for mm. forever. Because the objective was to bring people into a, a, a talent network and mm -hmm. let them shine, shine a light on themselves. So Upwardly Me. Mm. Ah, and so that was the great. idea. Um, uh, uh, about a half a year ago, I joined Clinch, the recruitment marketing company, yeah. and I'm their uh, uh, head of global strategy and it's been a lot of fun so uh, it's kind of what i'm up to now is that how you know abby actually uh kind of sort of i met abby at a conference or at a, yeah. at a uh, industry event uh, last fall actually um and we rekindled our relationship a couple weeks ago in san francisco at hr tech world conference at mark mark coleman's great event mm -hmm. so it was great to see her again is that when you were all out on the boat yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was a, blast. a lot of you. I was so jealous. I had the biggest FOMO <laughs> ever. Uh, <I'll> <laughs> I was you, just going to stop showing me those photos. And one of my so good many. buddies is Randy Bailey, and and he yeah. is a massive sailor. I mean, he's done. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. sailed boats to Bermuda. He's gone all over the place. Wow. And when he saw that, he just about died. 
I thought it was there there in San Francisco Bay on a catamaran screaming yeah. at 25 knots. No, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, typical. So, Abby, tell us about yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm Abby Cheeseman. Um, I am a co founder of Skill Scout, and we help companies bring their jobs to life through video. Um, so, prior to that, uh, my co founder, Elena Valentine, and I were at an innovation and design firm in Chicago called Gravity Tank. Um, and we got the itch of using principles of human centered design to apply to hiring. And so about four years ago, we started Skill Scout. So your background wasn't recruitment? It was not. Um, I have a background in industrial organizational psychology. Um, she has a background in media. Um, she's an audio engineer by trade. And cool. so it, we, we're, we're outsiders from the industry. Um, and so it's been, it's been an interesting learning curve, but I, I think because we, we don't come from the industry, we see things wow, a little good. bit from fresh uh -huh. eyes, naive, yeah. moronic eyes sometimes. Um, but but uh, I think it's actually helped us not having any bias about what we can and can't do. Yeah, yeah. It's sure. so true, right? And and that would also be in the whole, oh, because of, we've got to come across this way, we can't do stuff as well. So you would see it as, well, why not? <laughs> yeah, I think we that's good, consultant. challenge industry. We were, we were consultants that were telling companies, like, here's the next crazy idea that you're going to go do. Have fun. And so we were in this place of privilege where, you know, we thought that's kind of how it worked. Um, and then starting our own company, of course, there's been a huge uh, reality check there. But I think it's also <laughs> the spirit of that has helped mm -hmm. us um, evolve, even in some of the cool stuff that we're doing now with, like, virtual reality and 360 video. Um, because we don't have to answer internally or, you know, we're not real recruiters, mm -hmm. so we don't have to do any of that. Mm -hmm. now, so why do you guys think that so few companies have videos? That hate the camera. Yeah. Or they well, have one that's like five years old, you know, that, that everyone, think, it's the same as everyone else's. Yeah. Why do you think that's a challenge? I think video has a reputation for being heavy and expensive and immediately mm -hmm. out of date, to your point. Um, and I think we want to we want to blow that up because while you want to be thoughtful about what you're communicating, video does not have to just sit in the hands of the employer branding person or the marketing team. Um, it should be a voice that everybody can contribute to share what like is an authentic preview of the company. So I think mm. there's I think there's a lot of um, just like war stories about doing video, especially in the mm. last like five to 10 years, you'd have like stopping productivity, a two day shoot, this whole crew comes in. Mm. And so people have ha had that experience and it just feels like this huge expensive undertaking. But I, think you, there's I think it's more than that as actually. Well. There's, there's fear though to push back. So it's so, okay, so I just interrupted you, but there, there's that shocking um, video that came out of Australia the other week from the finance department about the girl walking down the stairs and she's actually a staff member and she's saying, oh, I'm just off for my paleo banana bread because a normal person's going to say that. Like, <laughs> And you're just going, so there's like a fear to push back from staff as well. So if they're involved, there's that. I don't know. Sorry, Casey, you were going to say something. I'm no, sure no, I'm that's a great that. point. And I, you know, it, it gets to the, why are you doing this, right? But I think yeah. really, uh, Abby made some great points, but I think it gets even before that, though. Uh, you know, it, particularly when you get the, to the larger size company, you have the communications team overseeing it. You have the mm -hmm. marketing people having a say. You have exec, because uh, it all represents them. Um, and you have um, talent acquisition who, who are promoting this this concept and they're not video people they're typically not looked that way by any of the stakeholders i just mentioned so are you going to have confidence that these people are going to do a good job and represent the company no and so what happens there's all this oversight and all these uh, you know people having a say in the matter so nothing ever gets done and what does get done mm, that's right. that sausage making is what we see today on video in corporate Websites, which is, yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about die. that. Some of what you just described, Katrina, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's also that element of it's got to be perfect and it's, it's, yeah. it's on our website representing our brand and representing us. And if it's not to the highest quality and, you know, broadcast caliber, uh, uh, it's not something we'll allow. And I think yeah. that's, those are some of the biggest issues. I know, Audrey, you've got those issues at Tenable, for example, trying to get the right thing, trying to get it done right. Yeah, luckily though, my director's super forward thinking and he gets excited about cool ideas and new things. He wants to try new things. So that is really awesome. I worked at a bigger company and I would have had all those issues. So I'm 
which is part of the reason I joined Tenable actually is because I knew I could do kind of cool forward thinking things yeah. and my director would support it. So I'm very lucky. So what about the way, when, when you think about it, oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, <laughs> Katrina, when you think about it, who's in those yeah. videos typically? Who are the people, who are the talking heads? Well, Actually, the CEO, stopped, however. the senior VP, oh, the yeah, head of the division, probably the worst person to have in any employment yeah. branding video, but we'll get to yeah. that, I'm sure. We had two on our career site, um, and one had the three founders, and it was a great video, and one had some employees, and then we looked at the hits, and it was amazing how cool, which ones they were watching. The employees. Yeah, right. yeah every time. Because if you... But you just said you wouldn't want to be in a big company, yet you take B to B. We are Cisco or Cisco, so but they're you know, and their yeah. Twitter, which they then go and put on YouTube. It's uh, not their Twitter, their Snapchat that they then go and put on mm -hmm. YouTube, mm -hmm. and it's like they just hand it out to staff, and off they go and spend the day mm -hmm. playing on the Snapchat channel. I mean, that's so okay. brave. Mm -hmm. What? Why can they do that? Like from you guys who are you know selling in video, you must know why they've got freedom, or. I wonder if it's just something to do with their management. It's just a commitment to doing it um, and being able to see some early results from people want to hear from other candidates. That's that appetite that Glassdoor years ago is trying to fulfill. Yeah. And I think the next gen is like pulling it off of a website and actually making it, um, you know, a little bit more of a tangible experience. Like you're talking to someone, only it's a little bit more one directional. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> We've all gone quiet. Drop the mic. So <laughs> That's it. We're done. Blown away, Abby. <laughs> we're all trying to talk at once. Now we're not talking. That's hilarious. Um, Casey, what are some really cool, innovative things you've seen people do with video besides Cisco? Because that is impressive. Well, there's so many. Um, yeah. you, you know, I think that the the uh, and, and you know everything that I've heard in the last six months is authenticity, and the more authentic you are, uh, the more believable uh, mm -hmm. the video will be, and the less propaganda the user will will view it as. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know there's been years ago there was a buddy of mine that ran uh, uh, this this end of the business at a at a very large uh, tech company in France, and they had thirty forty thousand employees. And he put out a, a note to everyone as a contest. It was about the time when um, Vine and, and those six second spots were becoming popular. And he, and he said, it was, it was a contest for showing what it's like to be at your desk Ooh, at cool. any point in time you want during the course of the day, whatever. I think they got something like 700 videos, six second videos. And talk about content rich. Yeah. Um, it was pretty cool. And of course, they, they had this whole contest. They had people vote. They had the employees oh. vote on the ones they That's liked the best. Yeah. And then it went on and on and on through several layers. And I think the top 10 were were put on the website actually and wow. they posted it out on youtube or wherever i can't remember yeah. the, the various channels this is going back probably 2012 time frame maybe five four or five years ago um so that's it to me that's a cool thing yeah, yeah. So i mean cool. uh, i was talking with stacy zapar a couple of weeks ago and she told me about uh, a client that she did work with and um it was a very visual company where uh, loaded with creatives and people that would be attracted to their business were photographers and videographers and things like that. And they actually um, had this frame made that looked like a, uh, a Polaroid frame mm -hmm. and they would shoot the video as that with someone holding it up. They actually showed the person holding it up, you know, with their hands <laughs> and their arm. And then behind that was the person's, day in the life kind of you know it was snapshot five ten twenty yeah. seconds um yeah. i thought that was really clever um so yeah. it, it gave a little bit more creativity to, to the process but i think in, in any instance it's all about uh being authentic you know if you look at any Ananda rodriguez's videos that he he's done over the years i mean i think he's he's really he's really done a terrific job at at, at manufacturing a two or three minute video that that is snappy, snappy, lots of driving music, but really creative mm. and fun. Mm -hmm. You know, Ed Nathanson has done the same thing in his, in his, his work. Um, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think it's really finding what the core message you want to send out um, and then making sure that there's a story or something that's fun to see in your video um, that will attract that type of person. Um, so what do you do and, if you're not a fun company? 
What's that? What do you do if you're not a fun company? <laughs> oh, maybe there's Abby always... can answer that. I'll drop that one on Abby. Yeah, <laughs> cool. I think you show, so one of the things that SkillScout does is we show authentic job previews. Um, so rather yeah. than, you know, a typical company culture video, we actually just want to create a job posting that's in video form. Um, and yeah. so we're interviewing the person who's in the position and then we're following them around. Um, and even though for some of us that might feel mundane in certain jobs, for the right candidate, they're gonna get geeked about that and say like, oh, I could see myself doing that. Whether it's running a CNC machine, or yesterday um, I was filming some 360 video at the Midwest Bird and Exotic Animal Clinic. Um, and so, oh, yeah, cool. I mean, it would be a terrible job for me. I was freaked out the entire time. There was birds flying <laughs> at us. Um, but the birds, the birds. My colleague was like, oh, this is the greatest thing. And I think I love that. every workplace has that, that thing. Um, and it's just yeah. about like giving the window into that uh, yeah. and not thinking about every video that you make as um, like a branding piece. It's just your brand is a collection of the things that you put out there. Um, and so if you just think about being authentic, your brand builds itself versus here's our brand. Here are the top five talking points we have to put in this video because that's our brand. Just show it. Just show, show you know the team working together as they're clipping sugar gliders' nails, right? As you do. But, uh, when you think about the first day desks, like any photographs of first day desks go absolutely nuts on LinkedIn. Like we all just want to see ourselves sitting there, right? This is you come in your first day. It's what you have. It's exactly what you're saying. <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> come for a visit. It's like bye. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mum's on video. Follow. Mom's <laughs> kicking out over there. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> video. That's just so 2017. <laughs> He'll be saying that shortly, won't he? Yeah. He is. Yeah. I wonder what they'll have in his day. That's interesting. What about on a budget? What do you guys think about? ways to do just use your phone right and an iMovie or whatever yep. i've seen some cool stuff with that i do all my you know, it, it, to, to me what happens is you always get that headshot right and and you see the these twenty five thousand dollar video productions where they'll come in for a two-day shoot and they're they're putting makeup on the ceo or or the hand-picked telegenic or photo, excuse me, photogenic and telegenic uh, employee, That's and it's all scripted, yeah. and the lighting is there. They got the grip guy, and they got the you know all these guys doing their thing. And um, at the end of the day, what what's the result of that? And you talk about budgeting. First of all, I'm, Abby, you got to jump in after this because I want I want you to talk about what you guys are doing because it's yeah. or it's it's a uh, earth whatever earth shattering and groundbreaking. But I think here's here's one thing, you know. You can get for hundred dollars. You can get a hundred dollar software. I use Sony Vega, <laughs> cheapest one, the cheapest version they they use. Or you can use what comes with whatever your software with the, with your PC or your or your Mac. Yeah. They all have it. And go and go and take a bunch of still images. You do not have to have video. Yeah. And yeah. you're basically creating a, uh, and then just do your cuts. Just put the, just pop mm -hmm. them into the. It's very simple. If you can build the, mm -hmm. you know, people think about this and they say, oh my god, I can't technically do it. Do you do do you build a PowerPoint presentation? If you can do a PowerPoint presentation, you can do what I'm describing. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And you take pictures of all around your office, all around your building, uh, uh, you know, the bowling league event or the soccer event or whatever you you, you know the leagues, whatever your, your your employees are involved with, and you just put together like a film chain of 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 snips mm -hmm. of these, uh, and you know you can put it with with uh, transitions, fade in or not, whatever. It's very mm -hmm. easy and find some I silly song that. or actually have a bunch of people sing a song uh, which is actually <laughs> even better and and let that be your video you're off. Yeah. i and use then, um screen flow i know it's macbook but oh my god it's so awesome it's i can record my screen i can record me i can record the desktop i can and it's uh you can chuck stuff in and out i'm forever editing it's it's so easy and you're yeah. right if you, you know, and when you consider the fact when I left school, computers were only just coming in, and the fact if I can do this, anyone can do this. So yeah. I think it's very, very cool. Our mantra at Sky Scout is if you can take a video of your cat or of your kid, you can take a video of your job. Um, yeah. And so I think, yeah, to your point, like about the cell phone video, I think that's a great place to start. Um, you can edit yourself. You don't have to edit. Even a 30-second snippet of somebody talking about their job and walking you through and saying, hey, this is where I do this. Um, that's better than nothing. Uh, and then steps up, you know, baby steps, right? Steps up from that, you can edit yourself. 
Skill Scout has a film your own job video um, kit that we make it really easy to figure out what to capture and then you submit your clips to us and we put it together. Um, but I think my whole passion is around making video accessible to people and making not feel, if you can post something to Instagram, you can post it about your company and make it not feel like um, this big produced thing. It's just a sharing, just like today. We didn't prep, we're not practicing this but there's authentic content coming out and that's why people care about it. Same goes yeah. for videos about your company. You're getting- Yeah, um, you know, just to jump in on that. Building. Check, check Angie outside here. I love the videos, they're amazing. So simple and authentic. Skill Angie. Scout rocks. <laughs> that's really hard to say. Skill Scout rocks. <laughs> um, I'm trying, yay. The other thing I was gonna say is um, I had a whole load of uh, little video snaps and actually when I put them, I downloaded the whole lot into my camera and I actually stitched them together into a video. Like, and then you can use that elsewhere. I mean, it's, it's so I, think, it's the, the thing is that what are your what are your target audience looking at? Who's your target audience? People that want a job or that you want to attract to your yeah. company to consider you for employment. What are they looking yeah. at online? Are they looking at these, mm -hmm. you know, uh, incredibly produced, uh, high quality videos, or are they on all the places we've just talked about, where it's you and I making them? So why is yeah. that? Should that be any different for what we put out there for them mm -hmm. to consume about our yeah. about our? Companies? It's just it's a very yeah. simple equation, I, quite frankly. I think in the with the likes of I mean, there's just still healthy skepticism around Glassdoor, right? But the there's this the bullshit meter's gone up along with all the polished PR videos. So we all went, oh, that's not really what it's like. So that's why I think everyone wants the real content. And again, it goes back to like TripAdvisor. You know, I know people who only book a place if they see a video or a photo of the pool. Even if it says they've got a pool and there's a polished PR photo, they want the real one. So oh, that's cool. I like that. What's going on down the side here? Are they all is this um, still working? Someone's having huh? trouble with the video. I don't know if Angie, tell us if you can still see us. Um, KC freezes quite regularly. Yeah, I don't know what that yeah. is. I'm freezing all along here. Bandwidth. It's cold yeah, here in Boston. No, I'm just kidding. I see. Oh, there Andy, there. <laughs> I, I tell you, this thing where I'm plugged in via the power is incredible. So it goes it gives it a real boost on the Wi-Fi. I'll send you the link later, Casey. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I, we're, we're cooking here at, you know, plenty of speed. I don't know why we're having this problem. So, so can we get access to your little kit of suggestions without actually submitting video? I want to I oh, see yeah. what you're writing there about what people should suggest. It would be so cool to share with my clients. Yeah, absolutely. As well, and get them to come and... I would obviously give full credit. Oh yeah, <laughs> just realized how that came out of my mouth. <laughs> our, but like our video recipes is what we call them. Hi, kitty. Say that again. <laughs> we give our video recipes um, out, you know, to anyone uh, because I think whether or not you work with Skill Scout, there's content that we can help you with and that we can make it easier on you. Um, but yeah. our goal is to make everybody do video, whether or not they work with us. So I'd be happy to share oh, some of our wacky ideas. So cool. And I think. Have you this? Go ahead. I was going to say, I've quite heard that face, Facebook's saying it's going to be all video in four years now. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I wonder if it will be. It's interesting. Two billion users. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see Angie okay, says, cool. share your wacky ideas. Wacky. So, Do you know what I'm finding frustrating is I want to <laughs> like the comments down the side here and you can't. Like you do on Facebook, but like yeah. that's how addicted we are to liking comments. Yes. And you can put gifts on comments and it's like, yeah. I'm addicted. I, yeah. I have so, a LinkedIn, you can't put a like silly face with emoji. Why can't you do that on LinkedIn? Yeah, <laughs> very serious. So, was, why can't you communicate with those? So, <laughs> so, uh, wacky ideas, yeah. wacky idea number one that we can all go and do now. When we get off the end of this, yeah. at four, we're ready, we go. So a cool one that we've done, seven. aside from your job preview which i think everyone should be doing a job preview mm. on video yeah. um like the secret life of uh so whatever your company uh, does whatever you make whether it's a service or a product um we've done like the secret life of uh you know technicians like how many how many machines have you uh repaired in your career and then we get the real data and we make this funny little vignette about you yeah. know <laughs> I've done a thousand and really it's been nine, you know, and, and just funny little <laughs> social things. So secret life of your products of what you guys do. Um, I think another really cool one that we're working on is 360 immersion. You can buy a 360 camera for uh, your phone. We bought one and we're prototyping with it at Skill Scout. Um, and you just set a tripod in an area where cool stuff's happening for oh, maybe cool. 10 minutes and then time lapse that and speed it up so that 
a candidate can come in and see like, oh, this is this is the activity that's going on. They can have a little bit more of an immersive experience. Mm. And the cool thing is Facebook uh, handles 360 video now. And so does yeah. YouTube. Facebook has some mm. cool tools where you can actually um, make call outs on the video. So if there's like a certain area that you want to say, say you ha you own a restaurant and you want to call out, like this is where the sous chef works, this is where the prep cooks work, this is um, where the dishes are being washed. You can make little call outs and notes on that so that when 360 experiences are very disorienting, especially because we're not used to uh, consuming them yet. And so these call outs yeah. make it really easy for someone to say like, oh, there's something I should be looking at over here right now or over here right yeah. now. How much are those cameras? They're cheap. They're, yeah. I want to say we paid like $250 for the one that yeah. sits on the iPhone. Um, and of course you can it's spend. It's cheaper for you than me. Yeah. On, and we found that <laughs> was on Amazon. Um, I think you can spend, you know, thousands and thousands on high-end 360 cameras. But if it's something you're thinking about doing, it can, the technology is very affordable. It's not going to be the mm -hmm. most high res, but same with a GoPro. I think we do some really cool mm -hmm. perspective shots. Um, so we work with a company that does armored car services and we put a GoPro on them and had them walk through getting their bulletproof vest on, getting mm -hmm. their gun prepped, getting awesome. in their truck, going on their route. And it just gives this like really clean perspective. Um, you don't even have to do dialogue, throw some music on top of it uh, and then edit out, you know, the uninteresting parts and throw it up for candidates to see. So clever. But even the panoramic photos, when you upload them onto Facebook, will allow you to do 360. It's, yep. quite, it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Kind of mind-blowing. Again, going back to computers were only coming in when I left school. <laughs> yeah. I think that's you relate to what I'm talking about. <laughs> a good thing, though, if you do post it to Facebook, um, make sure you have um, what they call captions, because they say 85% of people don't Silent even turn on the sound on Facebook. Yeah, and that's why some of those immersive ones that have no dialogue are nice too, because it's all visual. You don't have to worry about the the um, verbal storyline. It's just walking through it. Yeah. Well, and sometimes they they don't you don't want to hear that body that audio at work if you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. So to, yeah. it's really critical. Yep. I'm more concerned yeah. about what Mike has just shared down there. I bet that's not suitable for work. Mm. Knowing Mike. <laughs> I'll wait till after to click on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm so waiting for afterwards. I'm not clicking that link. <laughs> As in it's not adding to the, uh, to the job, there. adding to the job uh, videos that Abby just spoke about. Yeah. I think that there's another area where we could really explore much f more fully. Um, if you, I'm a big fan of Laszlo Block and all his the, the books he's written in the, mm. you know from Google. And it, to me, what most people are interested in, yes, it's the job and what they'll be paid and what the work they'll do. But I think a higher percentage are more concerned about mm. where they're going to sit, yeah, you know, right. how much natural light there will be. Is there, you know, a sustainability program? Is what is there a parking spot for me, or what's yeah. the bus or T or mm -hmm. or subway like to get there? Yeah. And you know, I, it, it, there was a, a group that I interviewed, uh, excuse me, uh, recruited for a handful of uh, months ago for a giant CPG company in New Jersey, and uh, they were about 55 miles west of the city and mm. everyone lived in the city <laughs> and mm. there was a group of guys and gals that worked that came out of a particular uh, b school that all knew each other and they all mm. got hired for this company and they all had cars and what they would do is because it's such a pain in the ass to to park your car on either side of the street in new york mm. is that they would park all their cars out in in the uh parking lot and every week or every day someone they draw a straw to see who would actually do the driving back and forth and have to mess with their car. Everybody else kept their car in the parking lot at the company. <laughs> can, cool. you imagine, can you imagine the conversations these people have on the yeah. way in and out of the city? The um, and just the whole situation of drawing those straws and who's going to get it this week or what have you. I mean, to me, that would be a, an incredibly fun way to show what the company's about and what people work, work there. Other that things are- Carpool karaoke. Uh, oh, exactly. Oh, there's so many different ways you can go. <laughs> Um, yeah. I've forgotten his name. The English guy. It's so cool. Anyway, yeah. Can name something. James, uh, yeah, Gordon. Yeah, Gordon. Yeah. James Gordon, Gordon. Gordon. Oh my god, I love him. They yeah. could do that. Off key. You, know, you, can, you could you could you could sit in the in the lobby when people come in for work. You can yeah, take your yeah. video camera and just walk around the cafeteria if you have one yeah. um, at, at, at your company during lunchtime. Uh, you can, you know, there's so many different ways to go, and it's just You've got your phone, you've got your camera, go walk and I show. I get so much, so much fear about deselection as well. 
So Reward Gateway, who are over here, who I adore, and they sponsor my Disrupt HR, actually, uh, mm -hmm. Abby. They, they have this incredible office. I mean, it is beyond cool. I actually should do a 360 video for you guys. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. I would hate to work in there because it's all open plan. It's all hot desk. There's no drawers. There's nowhere for me to throw my shoes. It's like, I would hate it. I need my mm -hmm. silence. And so, but most people would walk in and go, oh my God, I want to work here. This is amazing. It's actually all built around a cafe. It's, it's the coolest, but I'd hate it. And it's like, what's wrong with me deselecting myself out of that? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And, and I would see something else that might be great. Cool, and I'd be like, yay, I can go into my zone. <laughs> I'm going to go work there. And people would be like, oh, we can't show our office. It's cubicles. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, not? I think okay, going on down here. <laughs> video is equally uh, important to help candidates self-select out. Um, and many, many, many of our clients are doing that. Um, so the security company that I mentioned earlier, one of the things that they're trying to do is to have fewer applicants, but more quality applicants. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it's an armed environment. It's a tough job, but for the right person, it's a great job. But we're so afraid to share those details um, yeah. because employer branding at one point, uh, there was a lot of talk about getting the name out there and getting people to apply and, and mm -hmm. sharing and sharing and sharing. And now I think we've kind of right-sized it down to share, but share real so that you're getting the real yeah. people that you actually yeah. want to get. Well, you tell yeah. them to well, leave. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's showing the warts and all. Yeah. Or are you going to have them leave? And by the way, Jonathan, it would have to be a heck of a lot of pints for me to get in the car machine. <laughs> doing Why? Karaoke. What's wrong with Shane's driving, Casey? <laughs> no, he's driving? <laughs> wow. Well, he won't be having the pints. I'll be I'll be doing the shots next time. <laughs> <laughs> I you know you get me going. <laughs> <laughs> that is the way. I do think there is an element of self selecting, and I think that, that oh. that's the part that I that I really believe is where we're headed from an EB play. Mm -hmm. And I think more and more companies are realizing that when you have two or three hundred applicants and only ten percent actually mm -hmm. are on target. Um, yeah. it's, it's so time consuming for your recruiters to dig through that. Yeah. Um, yes, there's some AI programs out there like Clinch where mm. we're actually uh, helping with that to direct you to the right ones to open. Yeah. But you know, if you're, if, you, if you're a recruiter, you get the fact that every one you open in your ATS has to be dispoed. And if you're going to disposition, I mean, it's a pain. It's a lot of, a lot of extra effort and time. It's, well, I don't mean it that negatively. <laughs> no, I've just never heard that before. But, it's um, clearly you <laughs> But, but it, it, I think that's really critical. And most of the companies I've been talking with in the last year, that's their issue, trying to get the right people to apply. Yeah. Um, and not every, they don't need more. They need the right ones. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's a, a big part. And, you know, with the videos that Abby's uh, uh Company, her company is doing where you actually can see what the work is like. Can you imagine strapping a GoPro on a guy and he's, he's cleaning his gun or showing you how to do it? I mean, I, that's not my kind of job, right? So I'm not going to apply to that bad boy, but yeah. someone loves guns and they're going to want to be cleaning that gun every you know 20 minutes. So, I mean, you'll get to see that and it's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so I keep getting the giggles every time KC freezes. <laughs> You're kind of freezing with these big cheesy grins all the time. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you freeze, I'm going to catch one on camera for you. Oh, it's frozen right now. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh I'm ready, ready, ready. I'm going to have it ready. Next time. <laughs> Angie's got well, it covered with a screenshot. Oh, Angie's uh -oh. got it. Oh, no. I hope we all look gorgeous. We've got the girls looking good. <laughs> well, how does someone sort of start video if, you know, the company doesn't really have one? And they want to, what, like, how do they say there's going to be an ROI? Because can you, or is it just more of saying it's great for brand awareness? How do you pitch to the higher level? Like we need video. And even if it's a cheap one, how do you still say it's worth the time? Because maybe they're all busy. So if you start with a very affordable video, um, the, the ask is much easier. Um, and so when we first started out with Skill Scout, we started asking companies about their, you know, their churn and their cost of churn. And if we, you know, if we can reduce that, so on average is for these entry level positions, it was like 3,500 to 5,000, depending on the company. And if we could do a video cheaper than that's that. That's just the upfront cost. That's just if the upfront cost for person, one person. That's, it's way higher than that. That's right. That's right. And so yeah. if we said, okay, so if we can save you churn for one person by investing in this video, is it going to be worth it to you? Um, and that you know, being the naive non-recruiters that we were, that was how we sold our first few videos with Skill Scout. Um, and I think staying in that general vicinity of our price point and trying to make video even more affordable makes the risk just much less. And so companies are able to 
um, you know, even put some of the recruiting budget. So if you think about a job posting, like how much it costs mm -hmm. to post on Career Builder or Indeed or some of these other mm -hmm. places, um, yeah. creating a video is comparable to that. And so if you think about it in the cost of we're creating content to make it worth our while to post in these places, that's been an effective argument as well. And then can people, people will just to, share it to their friends and stuff as well. Because it's but there's even more than that, more concrete awesome. than that, Katrina, actually. I mean, yeah. you can, you know, if yeah. you if you employ a recruitment marketing solution to your to your career yeah. site, like like ours, but the, all, m many of that them do it. <laughs> that would be clinch.io. That would be, yes. <laughs> but but um, you know, we track we track on that on yeah. the career page where people right. go. Yeah. You know, we, we actually provide a heat map so you know who's seeing what, where, where they're being attracted. And if there's a video yeah. that, that very few people are watching, that comes up as a red flag. Get that video out of there or put it in a different place. So you can, you can and on top of that, besides just that, you can actually track through the people that have actually watched the video mm. and applied. And you've got a, you've got a direct ROI uh, what, to, mm. to the, the cost of that video. To me, oh, though, right. that's not how you sell that's just the, the icing on the cake, so to speak. This is all about marketing. I mean, I'm creating desire for the company, for the brand, yeah. and, and the views alone is what I'm really interested in. Or just say that out loud, what you've written there. So actually, fairly recently, I talked to a company that shall remain nameless, uh, and they do videos, and they wanted 10 to 15K per minute. So we wanted a three minute video. We were talking at least 30K. Oh. So that's, that's going to be tougher to prove the ROI for sure. And you what know, was so might... special about it that they could charge that? Was it gold plated or something? You know. Well, so they have like a six man crew. It's kind of stuff to, Casey was talking about, like massive lighting and this big show. But for us, that's you know not what we needed. So for some people, that... it might be for them. The other thing that's oh. effective, um, and thanks, Casey, for sharing like the real data. That's why we partner with places like Clinch because Skill Scout is a content creator and we don't um, we don't have the infrastructure to track all those metrics that are super helpful that Casey mentioned. But I think candidate experience is the other thing that we care a lot about. Um, and so when when candidates see a video, we've been able to um, work with some of our clients to do a quick testimonial like what was it like watching a video versus applying, you know, through a, a regular job posting. Um, and the things that we hear are things like the company cared about recruiting for this role because they invested in video. I could see the people I was going to be working with, and it, it made me make a better decision about whether I wanted to apply. Um, and so I think any company that's looking for improvement of their candidate experience, video is a really low-hanging fruit for that, especially at the job description level. Mm. Yeah, you know, Mark Lundgren made a great point, and and he said, you know, he had a professional crew come out, and it didn't cost as much. I'm just reading in the in the comments here, and that's absolutely correct. In the last 12 to 18 months, the cost of video has plummeted once they realize there's money to be made, and they can't go in charging broadcast quality rates, and and so it, it's definitely uh, uh, changing to some extent, but it's still nowhere near. You're still talking, you know, ten thousand dollars plus in most cases. And here's the best, here's the, the, the worst part of it. Part if you've got the CEO involved, CEO involved or any C-level person or senior executive involved, they don't want to. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my you know, you know comms and, and and marketing, marketing will never marketing allow you not to have the best, particularly if it's an enterprise-sized company. I mean, we came up against this at a company that I won't name either. That is one of my favorite companies, but no way would they. You know, this is a company that does. You know. I got billion dollars spend billion dollars in, in uh, broadcast, broadcast quality broadcast commercials. commercials. <laughs> yeah, so they're not yeah, going to so allow their CEO to be seen any other way. Um, um, and that limits and that the limits type of video you're going to produce. produce. Now, they actually do a good job of it. Anyway, I, I just throw I that out. It's great. definitely yeah. low yeah. Money in cost. Um, um, currently, we have uh, that echo. Okay. So, Mike yeah. would like you to pretend to be an announcer yeah. for the Cubbies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jonathan, I cannot say your surname, Jonathan, sorry. Uh, you might have covered this, but how many people have used job videos on job landing pages or are they being posted on career sites and Facebook pages? Great question. I mean, all of the above, right? right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're biased. We're, we're, a, we're a video uh, company, so we have videos everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were just talking before the broadcast about 
how Katrina had seen me in some videos, like trying to figure out like, well, which one was that? Yeah. <laughs> Got all different eras of, of uh, there we go. <laughs> so do you actually create a landing page? Yeah, so um, we have a landing page. Uh, I would say about half of our customers use it versus um, wanting uh, just the content. Um, so, but for those customers, we work with a lot of mid-sized manufacturing companies, logistics companies, healthcare companies that don't have a sophisticated career site. Um, and so we put together a landing page for them and help track some an like, like, very lightweight analytics. Um, and mm. you know, that's one way to do it. But I think. I'm really trying to work with the job boards to get them to allow video content to be embedded right at the mm. point of the, the ad. And some of them are working on that and some of them are hesitant. Um, so if you, if yeah, you, why if you're connected with any, because it's an infrastructural yeah. build and I think yeah. not enough people are screaming and demanding it. Um, and so, you know, it, it's one more thing that's on the feature request list, but I think it's critical to be able to embed your video. Yeah, Absolutely. but I mean, it's it's like LinkedIn scrapes the um, applicant tracking systems and puts up shocking job descriptions that make you cringe. Because <laughs> so it's the same. I mean, there's a fear yeah. to have video on applicant tracking systems or photos that attach and all that kind of stuff as well. So we have a ways to go. Yeah, a lot of ATSs don't support it. I think on the job description page there are some. That's right. Um, but that's a challenge for sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry about this echoing thing. This happened last time. About that's again why you need a recruitment marketing product, guys, by the mm -hmm. way. Because yeah. that would manage the outside of the ATS and be able to produce or provide uh, direct access to that, that uh, job video. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's one of the things, actually, you know. Yeah, we do have quite an echo. Yeah. I, you go, Casey. Happened, Casey. This has happened before, and I don't understand why. All of a sudden. Frustrating. Uh, and she's got a question. To pull up, I was hoping Audrey would read out. Um, um, she wants Casey to pull up his shirt, apparently. <laughs> no, no, further down. <laughs> well, someone mentioned the cubbies. I mean, come on, guys. You know, I, I, I used to go to three years. I was going to wear this wear shirt, shirt today, but I didn't want to, you know, I'm one of those cubby fans to tune in without, without feeling badly. So, because uh, we have a better record than that, sorry. Go ahead. Do you think individuals should use videos? What about personal brand? From Angie. Ooh, I like that. Well, I do, obviously. Oh, sure. <laughs> I use it all the time. As does Abby. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, Jim Strat's really amazing at that too. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 A lot of recruiters don't, but I think this because they're busy or maybe not technologically. Savvy, but the ones that do, they stick out. It's fantastic. Well, I think, I think there's a there's a hesitance of sharing yourself. A personal brand's even harder and more vulnerable than like a company brand. And so, I know when we started Skill Scout, I was like, oh, I hate being on video. And obviously, since then, I've gotten completely over that. But there's this hesitance and fear about putting yourself out there. Um, and I, you know, that is a more of a sharpened vulnerability when it's an individual brand versus a company. Um, and it was so interesting at HR Tech World when Gary Vee was talking about that, like just putting yourself, because he is the epitome of like personal brand, right? Like yeah. unashamed of like <laughs> unapologetically self-promotional. Um, but I, I dig it actually. Like I think, I think it's a platform that people want to connect with people. And so, mm. uh, even if a recruiter has a personal brand, so I'm a recruiter at Nike, and you are going to meet me as part of the hiring process, I think that's a really interesting humanizing way to bring hiring um, back to people. But it's, yeah. it's a risk, and so, it feels vulnerable, for sure. Uh, so I, I must admit, I haven't seen too much of Gary Vee's thing, but there'll be a cross-cultural thing going on in my head. So, oh. um, And he's uh, Michael Cox has written, Gary Vee is the poster boy for Look At Me. But I yes. think the thing is, recruiters have already got such a bad and a reputation in general that we have to be quite careful that they're paying it forward. So it's Look mm. At Me, but I'm giving you a whole lot of advice and support and no, tips no. and... Like yeah. you're saying, you've got the free tips on the video that we can go download. It's like that, pay it forward all the time. And I think the trouble is a lot of recruiters might get up and go, hello, I'm Katrina, I'm just fabulous. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I think as, as like self-promotional as Gary Vee is, he is authentically sharing value every time cool. he's sharing something. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. It can't just be shameless self-promotion. It has to have value to the audience, just like any great content marketing. Um, it's yes, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. I, so what I about tips say it for any the better, being in front of the camera? Because you said you were quite apprehensive, and I always give away my tip that I jump up and down before I do it, and then sit down, brush my head out, and go. Do you? Like, how did you overcome your fear? Um, I think I just I entered my thirties. <laughs> I got over it, and just like, got over like worrying about because we're all concerned about our own appearance on video yeah. right and so especially something that lives on beyond that moment yeah um but i think you just get once you've done it enough times it doesn't feel precious anymore and you just get over yeah. it and so i have a whole mm -hmm. bunch of really dorky videos and i don't care <laughs> if there's about yeah. mm -hmm. i don't really care about 30 is the new 20 that's right yeah no, no and, and 40 was the new 30 until yesterday <laughs> when i got the tenor light advert on facebook and just went shoot me now but anyway <laughs> That was quite boring. <laughs> but I, I think you're right. I think it just takes doing it. I found Snapchat was a great way to start for me. And then I ended up just in front of the camera and not caring. And so, I think, so we, we're also really mindful about helping companies make their employees feel comfortable on camera. Um, mm -hmm. So just some like really quick tips and tricks. Like if you have people interview their peers rather than like HR mm -hmm. descending upon or employer branding team descending upon, you know, like the people in the role, have them interview each other on camera. Um, okay. do interviews, you know, you can always do like the selfie of I'm filming myself. Um, but if there's back and forth, it just makes for a little bit less like awkwardness. Uh, if you're talking to someone, you're getting shit for that comment. It's so cool. I <laughs> hey, I'm going to tweet that out later. So <laughs> yeah, cut out the rest of us who aren't in our thirties, but anyway, <laughs> post 30, let me be clear about that. Um, yeah, but I think yeah, some of the are like just, but <laughs> other things that uh just like being able to do it multiple times doing some practice rounds um you know like when they say public speaking you're supposed to talk in the mirror like talk to yourself on camera and then record it oh. back and then see how it feels and see yeah. um if it's something that you like and then reposition the camera you know get, mm. get good lighting so that you you're coming across bright on camera um little things that you can do to tweak the way that you appear and the way that you feel if you're still feeling sensitive about being comfortable on camera. Oh. And if you're not, yeah. join the club. I think yeah. this is also really important, like having that other person behind the camera, like you're saying with the interview, yeah. so important. Because when I'm delivering to dead air, I find it really hard to oh, get so my energy hard. up. Yeah. yeah. yeah Casey, what did you, you do when you were, sorry, when you were, that? what did you do when you were actually in the videography field to like help the subject feel comfortable? <laughs> Well, in those days, I, I did a, I worked for CNN and ESPN. So a lot of it was a day, you know, we're, we're looking over someone's shoulder as they do their work. Um, some of the CNN pieces were straight up, you know, video, but we were doing like Nobel prize winners and people that were used to this. So it's not really the average person. Um, and in the sports world, they're doing their thing. You know, afterwards, when you're interviewing the star player or the, or the coach, they're so in the moment of the emotion and the adrenaline because they just finished winning or losing. Um, and uh, so the raw energy comes out and people don't care what they look like. They actually don't even care what they say. In many cases, it just yeah. comes out. So it, it, you know, if you could kind of get your subject into that frame, you'd get the you get the raw you get exactly what you want that authentic this is what it is um it's hard to do that and i i think you know what abby was mentioning in terms of having a a, a, a colleague or a co co-worker actually mm -hmm. be involved in it not hr not the video people it's hugely important and i think it that's one way to, to relax people i mean you know Three, four years ago, I'm using a tool called Inside Connector. I don't know if you guys know about it. And it's a, yeah. it's a way to, and you actually introduce yourself to a candidate using this own web tool and you, and you create a video and introduce yourself to the person. And four or five years ago, it would be like, okay, I've done my 40th take. <laughs> and and uh, you know that one word didn't work right. I got to do forty one, um, and and I, I think about now back on that and how silly that was. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, and I, I don't want to dominate the conversation, but what Katrina talked about in her 
in the pipeline interview was absolutely so so cool. And you showed me this last uh, spring at, at SourceCon where, you know, can you imagine we've spent the last 20 years leaving voicemail messages, sending emails, texting, hopefully now, if you're getting into that, trying to get the person to engage with you, right? Could you imagine, hey, this is KC, you look really terrific. I noticed on, you're on Facebook, I'd love to chat with you. Uh, give me, you know, reach back out to me. Hit, hit, set, and I'm looking at my camera making that video, right? I then pop that into their Facebook Messenger and, and send it up to them. You're going to see my face on the Messenger when they when they open it. Yeah. Are they and not going to click that? And they that? watch it before they have to accept it, so, so they don't even know. Talk just, about engagement. That's a video, I think, yeah. at, the, at the most tactical use of yeah. ROI yeah. <laughs> that you could find. And guess what, Katrina? Few people are doing it. And yeah. We they can't are really tell anyone. <laughs> what's, in, what's in my clients getting so excited doing it as well? It's just the best. It's like, yeah, yeah let's just do that. I'm like, oh, my kind of clients. Who is that? Yep, I posted that last night <laughs> on Facebook. Jim Durbin says, okay, yeah, let's see how long it takes before we all ruin this too. <laughs> but again, if she just can't just send the video, you got to fill out your bio, you've got to look like someone we're talking to, you got to pay it forward. Yeah. Oh wow. Laura's more, more written here being comfortable on camera. A lot has to do with yeah. who's behind the camera. Have someone asked yeah. questions. So what you're saying is a natural spot and not a forced feel. Yeah, and leave That's the right. arms in and the R's in and the make it feel like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we sort of naively came into this because, and Elena Valentine rocks behind the camera. That's my co founder at Skill Scout. Totally agree with you, Angie. We came in as ethnographic researchers. And so we knew a certain way of interviewing people um, that was like, tell me more and, and pulling responses from people in a way that made them feel honored and like they're the expert because they are the expert. They're the ones doing the job. Even if HR knows more details about, you know, the job description, the person doing it day to day knows more about it. Um, mm. So being ethnographic and how you're asking questions uh, which comes from like a just a real authentic curious place about what that yeah. person's experience is like and immersing yourself in it and not assuming that you know what they're talking about because your audience won't know what they're talking about. So like killing acronyms and making the person feel very uh, honored as mm -hmm. as they're speaking about their job. Yeah. Elena's you know, right. <laughs> the other <laughs> thing too, guys, and, and you may not agree with this, Abby, but to me, after being in the, you know, film production for, for half a decade or almost a decade. The t why is it that the entire marketing world uses 30 second spots at best 60 to get their message across? Yet we've got these three, four, five minute videos that nobody watches. That's right. Why, why can't we figure that out? Because we're recruiters, right? Tell the story so, in 30 seconds. So I, you I love this. So if you pick up a Coca-Cola bottle, you're choosing happiness. Whereas we put out job adverts, so the, the contents of the Coca-Cola bottle, and if you read that, you'd never drink it because your teeth are going to fall out. But that's, that's what recruiters do. I stole that analogy. It's not actually mine, to be fair. But I love it. It's like, choose happiness. Yeah, and your teeth will rot. But we're not going to say that. It, and that's the problem. We are recruiters. We're not marketers. We're not marketers. We need to be, but we're not. <laughs> we're not. No. We're just not. Yeah. And that's we why I say, look like someone worth talking to. I don't say build a personal brand because recruiters go, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, good point. we lost Abby on the queue. That's a bit worrying. I hope she's coming back. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh good. You just lost your oh, video. That's okay. Good. Oh, it, it might still be there for everyone else, just not me. So. Oh, no, I don't see anything. That's right. Because we're recruiters. It's because, okay, so for Michael Cox, uh, we can't get the HR directors of this world to stop freaking out. They're so fearful of anything not overly produced mm. or anything that looks real, which is crazy. Oh no, yeah. she's coming back. There she is. Back. There she is. Sorry about that. Oh, she's moved. Yeah. It's confusing when that happens. <laughs> oh gosh. Now I'm 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 on the higher Brady level now. Yeah, you've gone up a road. <laughs> then the video comes out and it's completely different. I'm so Greg we're like now. pointing. <laughs> it's yeah, so it's funny. When the video comes out and we're like yeah. pointing and, and it's, not right. the it's, funny, yeah. it's not in the order it's so <laughs> funny it's really cool. guys do you think more teams will start using live video in the next few years or do you think that's just kind of a fad that won't take off mm -mm, i think they will i think it will i think it will because it uh just takes it up a notch of that authenticity and it requires you to be authentic yeah. because it is live yep great question especially for, for, you, for Abby, events, from Jonathan. I think events are 
yeah, are going to be much point. a bigger part of our world mm -hmm. in terms of recruitment. And because um, uh, I think people want to be involved in things like that. And mm -hmm. being able to go live at an uh, event, it doesn't have to be a recruiting event, but mm -hmm. you get my point. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to yeah. certainly be something that you'll want to share very much like you'd share, you know, a sports show or, you know, yeah. whatever like that. Well, it's, it's more interesting because anything could happen at any time, right? So it's like exciting to watch. Yeah. But it's exactly. so cool. So this is right now going out on Facebook Live. And I mean, I'm sitting over here on Crowdcast. I'm not even looking at it. So I'm mm -hmm. sure there'll be loads of comments when we go back. But it's so cool because I can schedule it to my page and then repost it onto my personal profile. And it's like sitting there going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great question from Jonathan here. Abby, uh, are many clients including videos in any automated drip email campaign? Mm. Yeah, um, great that's question. a great question. Uh, more and more are. So that requires mm. content, right? And so um, one of the things that we've been trying to get really creative about is creating different recipes so that we keep fresh content that candidates care about so that you can use it in an email marketing campaign to kind of nurture that talent that you're talking to. Um, so things like even, so our team's going to do a little 4th of July um, video of like how did Skill Scouts spend our 4th of July and we're gonna have little snippets from the team and then share that out um, and so thinking about not just holidays but also significant events that are coming up for your company you have to have the content to be able to support that and so I think many companies are right at the point where they're like I want to do it um, yeah. but they don't have the backlog of all of the great content or a channel to easily create that but that's a great that's a great idea it's a great question and I would love to see more companies doing that one of, one of the ways we've succeeded in doing that is by putting an image on the video, uh, excuse me, on the uh, email that looks yeah. like a, a video. A it's video. got the little yeah. you know, arrow in the middle. So people click yeah. and, and we make that a link, a hyperlink, and people click it thinking they're going to watch a video. Well, they do, but they're sent to a page where the video is playing. And guess what else is on that page? A whole bunch of other cool things about the company and maybe a few yeah. jobs. If I always speak. get fooled by so. those. If there's a play button, I hit it and I go, damn it. <laughs> it works. That's it works. what happens with my blog when I actually do one and send it yeah. out. It's perfect. Emails that, that Sorry, include that type of streakers? image. A story <laughs> on a live video? I this was this, it really, a true story. <laughs> yep, that's why Jessica gets nervous about live video because she actually was doing a recruitment video and some guy ran by naked. <laughs> and I think CEOs worry about that crazy stuff, which never happens, but it did once. Right, we have four minutes left, and in that time, we have not discussed the purple cast, so that has to happen. Yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the whole story. <laughs> We've had streaking. I want to yeah, hear break. the story. No, but it's just so fun to look at. Look how big it is. But like, what <laughs> happened? I know you were playing ice it's hockey. It's very royal. Yeah. I love the color. It's just a, a royal crash. Yeah. Crash. I'm so glad I didn't try and get, I tried to get up to get off the ice because I felt bad that the game was being held up. <laughs> Thank God I didn't because I would have made it much worse. But you don't have to have surgery, so that's a really, really good thing. So far, so good. So oh, nice. that's great. Yeah, they were able to set I was going to bring my here. hockey pucks for the show today, but I forgot this morning when I left. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been quite funny. Few months <laughs> you should do like a Secret Life of the Purple Cast video. Yeah, they are gorgeous. Okay. Even Snapchat, I could do some funny. Just trying to wash my hair was really interesting. I could have definitely Snapchatted that. <laughs> do you know what? When you heard, what, all I thought about was, oh God, I hope she's on our show. I'm so bad. I just, <laughs> typical Australian, right? See, you're Australian. Like, you injure yourself in Australia, we just laugh. So that basically, I laughed and then went, God, I hope she's on the show on Friday. That's it. We're shocking. We are shocking. But I actually knew you thought that, and after, like in the ER, I was like, I better make the show. This <laughs> 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 is These things are important. Really important. <laughs> so, in our final minute mm. next week, we've got Kevin Grossman on. Grossman, Grossman, Grossman. See, I can't pronounce anything. Mm. So excited. Yeah, oh, Mark was thinking the same. See, he wanted you to be on as well. <laughs> Thank oh. you both so much for being yeah, here. Thank you. Oh, thank this you. was so much fun. How can yep, everyone reach? check out Clinch and Skill, Skill Scout? So just can they reach you there at Clinch and Skill Scout? Yep. Is that the Absolutely. Just, just use the contact form? Yeah, or on Facebook if you're watching this on Facebook Live. I'm a real just, person. You can just, yeah, just hit yeah. me up. So yeah. Yeah. Easy. 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 Thank you. That was anywhere. Easy. Sorry? Anywhere. 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 Abby equals real. Whoa, <laughs> that's a compliment out of Andrew. <laughs> Yay. Fantastic LinkedIn header. <laughs> Say it again? You should put that as her LinkedIn header. 
Yeah, real. Being human. Being human. <laughs> oh, and Jim's just popped in right at the end. How hilarious. Gets in in the last 30 seconds. Right. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, thank, you so all next week. thank you so much, yeah. Abby Casey. Yeah, Take care. Have a great Bye. weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.